okay, oh, okay. Come on, little friends. Hi guys, it's Katie from Yarn Society. Today we are gonna crochet this amigurumi owl together. Olive the owl is about two and a half inches tall when worked up in worsted weight yarn. She looks great in all the colors, so go ahead and grab your favorite color and let's make this owl together. We'll chat supplies first and then we'll get started. For supplies, I'm using this Lion Brand Woolies worsted weight yarn. Feel free to use any worsted weight that you have in any color. This one is a cream called Fisherman, and then I worked up the body of the owl in a pink called Blush Heather. We'll be embroidering on a beak, so you can grab any color yarn that you'd like. I have this color that's a little bit darker than the cream, and I cut an 18 inch piece of this, so go ahead and do the same, and keep that to the side. I also used an E 3.5 millimeter crochet hook. Feel free to use an F or an G, just know that it'll be a tad bit bigger than mine. You'll need a yarn needle, some scissors, you can grab a few stitch markers. If you'd like, you can also grab some pins for assembly. And then I have 15 millimeter safety eyes. These are pretty big eyes. If you don't have this size, you can go a little bit smaller, it's not a big deal. And then I grabbed some fabric glue because I like to glue the wings on since they're so small, but we can also assemble those with yarn as well. I'm gonna do a really quick show and tell. We're gonna start with the cream eyes and then we're gonna place the safety eyes. We're gonna work on the body which has this squarish bottom and then we'll finish off by making two wings. She's a pretty simple project, so we'll go ahead and get started. For the eye, you can grab your cream color yarn, your hook, and then a stitch marker. We are gonna start round one with a magic circle, and I like to do this with a slip knot and a chain. So to start with your slip knot, you can wrap the yarn around two fingers. You're gonna crisscross it. You can hold that tail with your ring finger, and then pull that back piece to the front. When you pull up on that piece of yarn, you will make your slip knot. You can tighten that up and insert your hook, and then we are going to chain two. Yarn over and pull your yarn through for chain one. Yarn over and pull through for chain two. I do have separate videos for each of these stitches where I go very slow, and also I have one for this technique as well. I'm gonna link all of those below. To make the magic circle, we are gonna place six single crochet into that second chain from the hook. So place your hook underneath that second chain, pull through to make your first single crochet. Place your hook into that same stitch, and we are gonna make a single crochet. This is our second one. We're gonna place our hook back through and make our third single crochet. Place it back through again. Here is our fourth, then our fifth, and here's our sixth and final single crochet to finish off our magic circle. Here we wanna close up our magic circle, but because we are placing safety eyes in the middle, you wanna leave a little bit of a hole. So you can tighten that up, but don't tighten it all the way. The backing on this 15 millimeter safety eye is pretty big, so you wanna make sure that you don't have to fight to get it in later. At the end of round one, I'd like to place a stitch marker. So I'm gonna place my stitch marker on the last stitch of the round. Feel free to place it on the first stitch if that's what you're used to. Starting for round two, we are going to make an increase in each stitch. So that means two single crochet into each stitch around. Here is our first little bit that's from our slip knot. We wanna skip that and then we wanna go under both loops of that first stitch. Place your hook underneath that first stitch. We're gonna yarn over, pull through, and then yarn over and pull through again, and that's our first single crochet. You're gonna place your hook through the same stitch again, and then add your second single crochet, and that makes our first increase. We're gonna move over to our next stitch. We're gonna make a single crochet. Back through the same stitch for our second single crochet and that is our second increase. Move over to our next stitch. We're gonna add two more single crochet. 
here is single crochet one go back into that same stitch single crochet two move over a stitch we're gonna make two single crochet again so here is that really weird piece of brown <laughs> black yarn that comes in your cream yarn sorry about that here's our first single crochet back through the same stitch and our second single crochet move over we have one more increase so make one single crochet and back through the same stitch make your second single crochet because i put my stitch marker on the last stitch of the round i always work into that stitch so here is our last increase single crochet one back to the same stitch and single crochet two at the end of round two you'll have 12 stitches you can probably tighten this up just a little bit because it opens up as you go but make sure to leave that hole pretty big at the end of round two you'll want to change your stitch marker and then we'll be moving on to round three so round three is just a little bit different we're only going to be working into the first five stitches we're gonna make a slip stitch in this stitch. We're gonna add three single crochet, and then we're gonna repeat that. We'll walk through this. We're gonna go underneath that first stitch. We're gonna make a slip stitch. So you're gonna go underneath the stitch, pull through, and then pull through again to make a slip stitch. Moving over to our next stitch, we're gonna place our hook underneath that stitch. And then we're gonna add three single crochet into the same stitch. So there's one, go back through the same stitch, here's single crochet two, back again through the same stitch, and here's single crochet three. We're gonna move over and make one slip stitch. So yarn over, pull through, and then pull through again. Move over and do three single crochet into that next stitch. Here is one, back through the same stitch, two, back in again, and three. We're gonna end this with one slip stitch, so move over and make your final slip stitch. We're gonna do something called a seamless join, so cut off a long piece of yarn, and instead of fastening off, we're just gonna pull that yarn all the way through. Grab a yarn needle and place your yarn through the needle, And then I like to see which stitch I worked into last. So I'm just gonna pull up here. This is my last stitch I worked into, so I'm gonna move over one. I'm gonna place my needle through that stitch, and then I'm gonna find the last stitch that I made, and it's this little slip stitch, so it kinda looks a little hidden. Place your needle right in the middle of that stitch, so it'll go um, in between the top and the bottom loop. You can pull that tight, and that's called a seamless join. We're going to weave both of these yarn pieces in. You can cut off those extra pieces of yarn. And then you can grab your safety eye at this point. We're just going to take out our stitch marker. We're going to put that safety eye down the middle but we're not gonna add the backing. You're just gonna leave this to the side. You're gonna want that little puffy part to be on the outside of the owl's eye. We're gonna attach it later to look like that. You can go ahead and stop the video, rewind it, and make one more eye. And then when you're done, we'll meet back for the body. We're gonna get started with our body so you can grab the yarn that you wanna use, your hook and your stitch marker. And I just wanna show you here, we're gonna be doing these increases in our corner stitches just so we can get this flat bottomed look. For round one, we are gonna start by making four single crochet into a magic circle. So do the magic circle however you'd like, or you can make a slip knot and chain two. That's what I'll be doing here, so I'm just gonna go ahead and continue to make my slip knot. Here, I'm gonna get set up with my yarn, tighten it up a bit, and then chain two. Here's yarn over, chain one. And then I'm gonna yarn over, pull through for chain two. We're gonna only make four single crochet into the second chain from the hook. So here, yarn over, pull through, yarn over and pull through for single crochet one. 
go back into that same stitch here is single crochet two back to the same stitch here is three and then back to the same stitch here is four I'm going to tighten up this magic circle and you can do it all the way now because we're not adding any safety eyes so I'm just going to pull down on that we're going to place our stitch marker on the last stitch of the round and then we are going to we're going to skip this little bit here this is from our slip knot here we're going to start out with one single crochet and then we will add three single crochet into this next stitch and then we're going to repeat that because we only have four stitches and i will talk you through each step place your hook underneath that first stitch and make one single crochet scooch over to your next stitch and we are going to place three single crochet into that one stitch so here is single crochet one go through the same stitch again single crochet two back to the same stitch single crochet three now we're going to move over and just make one single crochet And then in our last stitch, the one with the stitch marker, we're going to add three single crochet. If the stitch marker is getting in your way, just pop that out and continue to crochet. So that's three single crochet into that stitch. Don't forget to change your stitch marker. And then we are going to have eight stitches at this point. For round three, we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to make a single crochet in that first stitch. And then we're going to make three single crochet in the next. So we're going to place our hook. We have single crochet one. Here's single crochet two. Place your hook in that same stitch again for single crochet three. Move over and make one single crochet. Go to your next stitch and place three single crochet. We have one, back to the same stitch, single crochet two, and single crochet three. Move over for our one single crochet, and then move over to your next stitch for your three single crochet. Here's single crochet one. two and three so we have two more stitches we're going to make one single crochet and then our three so here is our single just make one single crochet and then in our last stitch we're going to make three single crochet and remember you can pop that stitch out that stitch marker out if you need to just don't forget to place it back so here's single crochet one two and three a little stuck here so at the end of round three we're going to have 16 stitches don't forget to put your stitch marker back on the last stitch of the round we're starting to get a little bit of that square look because we're putting our three single crochet in the corner i'm going to tighten up my magic circle one last time and then we'll move on to round four for round four we are going to do a single crochet in each of the first two stitches then we're going to do that three increase in the corner and then we'll continue on so here is a single crochet in the first stitch we're going to move over and make another single crochet here is our corner stitch so we're going to place three single crochet here here is one back to the same stitch two back to the same stitch again and three so now we're going to make a single crochet in the next three stitches and then we'll make our three increase in the corner so we have one single crochet scooch over make another single crochet and then move over again and make another single crochet Here's our increase with three. So we have one single crochet and then put 
back into the same stitch. Here's two and three. We're going to single crochet in each of the next three stitches and then place three in our corner. Here is single crochet one, move over, make another single crochet, move over for another. And then we're going to make a three single crochet increase in that corner bit. So here we have single crochet one, two, and three, that corner stitch. We're gonna make a single crochet in the next three stitches and then our increase in the corner. Here's single crochet one, move over. Here's our second, move over, and then another single crochet. We're gonna make our three increase in that corner. Here's single crochet one, back to the same stitch, two and three. We're going to finish off this round with one single crochet in the last stitch. At the end of round four you're going to have 24 stitches. If your work starts to turn in on you just flatten it as you go. Go ahead and change your stitch marker. Make sure you have 24 stitches at this point. For round five, we're going to kind of keep up the same momentum. We're going to make a single crochet in the first three stitches and then three in that corner stitch. Here's single crochet one, move over, single crochet two, and then we'll move over, and here's another single crochet. We're going to make three single crochet into that corner stitch. So we have single crochet one, go back to the same stitch. Here is two, back to the same stitch, three. So now we're gonna single crochet in each of the next five stitches, and then we'll make our three in the corner. Here is single crochet, move over our second stitch, Here's our third stitch. Move over for our fourth. And then move over for our fifth. We'll make three single crochet into that corner stitch. Here is two. And then here's three. Sometimes you lose your yarn, it gets a little crazy. Okay, we're gonna single crochet in each of the next five. Here is one, move over, two, move over for your third. Here's your fourth stitch. And then here's your fifth stitch. Make three in that corner stitch. I think you're getting the hang of it. We have single crochet one, back through the same stitch, two, and then three. I know my counting is very annoying, so feel free to mute me. <laughs> We're gonna single crochet in the next five stitches. Here's one. Move over, here's our second stitch. Move over your third stitch fourth, and then here's your fifth stitch. And then we'll make three single crochet into that corner stitch. Here's one, back to the same stitch, two, back in the same stitch, three. We're gonna end with a single crochet in each of the next two stitches. So here is one, and then move over for our last single crochet. At the end of round five, we'll have 32 stitches. Change your stitch marker. At this point, we have a really nice square going on. We're just gonna do one more increase like this, and then we'll start to single crochet. For round six, we're gonna single crochet in each of the next four stitches, and then we'll place three in our corner stitch. Here is single crochet one, move over, single crochet two. 
move over for single crochet three and then move over for single crochet four we're going to place three into this corner stitch so here is one single crochet two back to the same stitch single crochet three okay now we're going to single crochet in each of the next seven across and then we'll put three in that corner stitch here's single crochet one move over here's two single crochet three four five six and seven we'll make three single crochet into that corner stitch single crochet one back through the same stitch single crochet two and then three i'll let you single crochet across the next seven stitches And then we'll place three into our corner stitch. Here is single crochet one. Oops, lost that one. Here's single crochet two. And then three. We're gonna single crochet across the next seven, so I will let you do that and count. We'll place three into our corner stitch. Here is one, two, and three. We're gonna finish this off by single crocheting in each of the next three stitches. Here is one, move over two, and three. At the end of round six, we're gonna have 40 stitches. Make sure that you count before we do all of our single crochet rounds because if there is an issue you don't want to have to unravel all your work to find that back loop we are going to look at our loop here we have the one that's going towards us is the front loop and then the one away from us is the back loop we're going to place our hook just under that back loop only we'll make a single crochet and then we're going to single crochet in each stitch around so we'll have 40 stitches total you don't really need to count you can just go all the way around until the end going under the back loop only i do suggest counting after this round just to make sure that you have 40 because sometimes you can skip one or add an extra stitch in there on accident like if you're thinking about something or watching a show so i do suggest to count after each of your single crochet rounds Thanks for joining me today on this crochet along. If this is your first time, I hope that you are enjoying Amigurumi. And if you are a very, very beginner, um, please go ahead and watch some of my beginner videos. I do have quite a few of them. So if you're having any trouble with stitches, you can check those out. And if you have watched my videos before, you know that I have like disappeared. <laughs> so I am back. I don't know... Um, after this owl when I will have another crochet along video I'm hoping very soon but I think as some of you know I moved and we had to temporarily go into a smaller place and all of my things were in storage so I was really sad for a long time but I did get a chance to grab my lights and so I got this quick video done so I was super excited but now I have to pack everything back up because we are moving this summer but luckily I will be having a space to set my things up again so i'm gonna get all of my yarn out of storage i have been so good about not buying yarn i did make one michael's trip that 
got all of this Woolies yarn, but I told myself that I wouldn't go crazy and um, I didn't, so I'm very proud of myself. But I am excited to get all of my things out of storage and to start creating more. I have made a few new patterns that I do have up free on my website, but I really want to get those videos made because I think that would be helpful for you guys who are visual like me and that just want to crochet along with me. I'm hoping after the summer in July, I can get my act together and then start getting more um, fun videos for you guys. Okay, we're reaching our last stitch. So we are going to go into that back loop, the one with the stitch marker. And then at the end of this round, round seven, we'll have 40 stitches. Go ahead and change your stitch marker. So now we have this little ridge that's gonna help our owl stand up a little bit better. Just for a side note, you know that this round right here, right after that ridge is round seven. So if you're counting down, you'll see that this one is round seven and that's good to know just in case you're not used to counting rounds, you can use that as a guide from this point forward. Now we're going to move on for round eight through 15. We're gonna single crochet all the way around. So we're gonna start by going under both of our loops. We're done doing the back loop only. We're gonna to continue to the rest going under both loops. We're gonna single crochet all the way around the next 40 stitches. I'm gonna show you a little trick I like to use just to help me keep count. Once you get about three stitches in, you can grab another stitch marker. And then I like to grab a little bit of a stitch here horizontally and just place that stitch marker there. As you continue to crochet, I'll show you in the next round how we are gonna use that stitch marker. Continue all the way around until you reach the end and then we'll meet back. Okay, we're reaching our last stitch of round eight. We are going to change our stitch marker like usual. And now we're gonna start round nine. We're just gonna single crochet all the way around once again. And then I'm gonna show you here, as you continue crocheting from round eight through 15, you'll know that you marked round eight. So this one will be round eight, then round nine, and continue on until you reach 15. This way you don't have to start counting from the beginning because that can be a little bit confusing, especially if you're just starting out. So mark that stitch, continue crocheting, and then we're gonna meet back at the end of round 15. Okay, we're at the end of round 15. And so now we wanna make sure that we still have 40 stitches. We wanna change our stitch marker. You can take this out or you can leave it in if this will help you um, going forward. For round 16, we are gonna do something a little bit different. We are gonna make a decrease to start. And so if you haven't made a decrease yet, I do have a separate video that goes slow, uh, really slow. So go ahead and watch that. But I also will walk you through it here. For round 16, we're gonna join two stitches into one. To do that, we're gonna go underneath the front loop of one stitch, and then we're gonna take our hook and go directly under the front loop of the next stitch. It feels a little weird, but just go with me. We're gonna yarn over, pull through. You'll have two loops on the hook yarn over and pull through both of those loops. Here for a decrease, the thing that you wanna know is you want your yarn to be against your hook. You don't want it to be too loose as you move forward. So now to move on, we are gonna single crochet in each of the next three stitches. So for now, we're gonna go into our next stitch and we're gonna make one single crochet. You're gonna go over to the next stitch, make another single crochet, and then move over to make your last single crochet. We're then gonna make another decrease, so, so go under the front loop of the first stitch, go under the front loop of the next, yarn over, pull through, and then yarn over and pull through. So that is our second decrease. We're gonna single crochet in each of the next three stitches, here is one, move over, single crochet two, move over for single crochet three. So we're going to repeat this. We're gonna make a decrease and then single crochet in the next three stitches. I'm running out of yarn, so I'm just gonna attach a new piece really quick. If you run out of yarn, all you have to do is, I like to just tie a knot around the new piece. And since we're not making a color change, I'm just gonna grab that new piece and just continue on. 
So here we're going to continue with another decrease. Go under the front loop of the first stitch, front loop of the next, yarn over, pull through, and yarn over and pull through. Then we're going to make a single crochet in each of the next three stitches. And then we're going to repeat and do a decrease. So we have front loop, front loop, yarn over, pull through, yarn over and pull through. We're going to single crochet in the next three stitches. Here is two and then our third. We're going to make another decrease. So go into your front loops, yarn over, pull through, yarn over and pull through. Single crochet in each of the next three stitches. Two and three. And then we will make another decrease. Single crochet in each of the next three stitches. Make another decrease. I'm sure you're getting the hang of it now. Single crochet in each of the next three stitches. And then here is our last little sequence of our decrease and our single crochet in the next three. At the end of round 16, you'll want to change your stitch marker. We're going to have 32 stitches at this point. For round 17, we're going to make one decrease and then we're going to single crochet in each of the next two stitches. And we will do that eight times total. Here is a decrease. Then you'll single crochet in each of the next two. Then we are going to make another decrease, single crochet in the next two. Here is another decrease, single crochet in the next two stitches. have another decrease single crochet in the next two we have a decrease single crochet in each of the next two stitches We have another decrease, single crochet in the next two, we have a decrease, single crochet in the next two, and then this is our last little sequence of a decrease. And we'll finish off with a single crochet in the next two stitches. At the end of round 17, we are going to have 24 stitches. Change your stitch marker. For round 18, we are going to decrease single crochet in each of the next 10. And then we'll repeat that one more time. Here is a decrease. You're going to single crochet in each of the next 10 and I'm going to let you count.
Here is another decrease. And then you can single crochet in the last 10 stitches. At the end of round 18, we will have 22 stitches. You can count those. Don't forget to change your stitch marker. For round 19, we are going to make one decrease, single crochet in each of the next nine stitches. Here is our first decrease. Single crochet in each of the next nine stitches. I'm gonna let you count. Here is our last decrease. And then you can single crochet in each of the last nine stitches. At the end of round 19, we have 20 stitches and this is our last round. We're gonna fasten off. You can leave a pretty long piece of yarn because we're gonna whip stitch this close and you wanna give yourself enough slack. So I probably did a bit more than 12 inches, maybe like 15 inches. And to fasten off, you can yarn over and pull that yarn all the way through. I like to give it a little tug at the end and then you can take out your stitch marker. We are gonna place the eyes and embroider the nose before we close her up. So we are gonna have that square bottom, that round one is gonna be the bottom, and then we'll have this opening at the top. In order to somewhat center my eyes, I just pinch that close so that I know that will be the front of my face. For the eyes, you wanna place a pin between round 13 and round 14. So I'm just gonna put a pin in the middle here, just any place random. And then I'm gonna grab another pin and we're gonna start counting our rounds. I'm looking between round 13 and round 14. I know that the ridge starts round seven right after that ridge, so I'm gonna count from here. So this is seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14. So I don't know how, but I like hit the jackpot. I like got it right in the middle, which is kind of crazy. So. I want to leave five stitches open in between my eyes. I'm going to put my pin here for now and then I'm going to count five stitches over and then place my other pin and just kind of see how that would look. Be, be careful with these pins, you don't want to poke yourself. I'm just double checking that I'm in between 13 and 14. And I think this looks okay. If I have the top closed, I think this would look good. Now we're gonna grab our safety eye. When you're about to place this eye, I like to put my finger right next to the stitch because this one with the 15 millimeter can be a little tricky to get in the spot. I'm gonna have that ruffled piece over to the side. I'm gonna take out my next pin, leave my finger there, and just add my safety eye. I'm gonna have that ruffled bit on the outside once again, so you can just fix that how you like it. And then we'll add the backs of our eyes. Because these are such big eyes, I only go down one row of the backing 
and I almost do like a seesaw motion to get it shut because I don't want it to go too fast. I want to have a little bit of control. And if you click too many of them, it could just get a little too tight. So you just kind of rock it slowly until it clicks once. This one was being a stinker, so <laughs> I finally got it. Okay, now that our eyes are in place, we want to grab that long piece of yarn that we kept to the side. Go ahead and weave your yarn needle through, and then you can knot the other end. We're going to start by going on the inside of the head and we're going to find round 10 and 11. We want to place our yarn needle between round 10 and 11. I'm going to start at round 7 because I know it's right below that ridge. And here's 10 and 11. I'm going to place a pin. You want to find the spot that's centered between the eyes. So I found the spot with my pin. Now I'm going to try to go up with my yarn needle. I'm gonna pull that all the way through to my knot, and now I'm gonna find round 12 and 13. If this is 10 and 11, we're just gonna go up between 12 and 13. I like to scooch over all the way to the corner, kind of working underneath that cream yarn for the eye. I'm gonna go into a stitch and pull that through. We're gonna go back through the same stitch of round 10 and 11. And we're just gonna scooch over and just embroider on the snows. You don't have to go straight across. You can pick a few, you can go in the middle and then to the left and then fill it in. I just kept going through that bottom stitch and just moving over. Continue going up through that bottom stitch and then just go ahead and then embroider across. Once you get all the way across and you're happy with the stitch, I just like to go back over to that corner bit under the eye and that can be a little bit tricky because my eye, the backing of my eye is a little bit in the way. So I'm going to go up through that corner stitch and then you can bring that across the top just to kind of cover that top part and finish it off. Go over to the other side and just make a horizontal line across the top. You can use your needle to just kind of fluff it up if you need to. We are going to secure that piece of yarn on the inside of the head. Do your best to kind of flip your piece so that you are working on the inside of the head. Once you can get there, you want to take your yarn needle and just go under a little stitch or two on the inside of the head and then pull that through. When you get a little loop on the end, you're going to take your needle and go behind the loop and pull that through to make a knot. I like to make two knots just to be extra secure. So I'm going to grab another little piece, pull all the way through. Once I get a loop, I'm going to go behind the loop and then pull that yarn through to make a knot. So we did the eyes and we embroidered on our beak. Now we're just going to stuff the owl and then we're going to close her up. Here I want to show you quickly, even though we have this flat bottom and we have her stuffed, the owl doesn't stand straight up. Because these eyes are heavy, when you go to sit her down, even though your bottom is flat, well, semi-flat, almost flat, she does tend to kind of roll forward. So just know that in making these, if you wanted to, you could cut a like piece of cardboard to fit the bottom and then add the stuffing. That would might give you a better chance of the owl standing straight up. I know they also have those crochet beads, so you could also try that to kind of counterweight the back. But if not, if you that doesn't bother you, you can just go ahead and add your stuffing and then we'll close up the owl.
We are going to close our owl with a whip stitch. Go ahead and grab your yarn needle and then weave that yarn into your needle. I personally like to go through the stitch that's next to my working stitch and just pull in that piece. So I'm going to pull that in and then we're going to start our whip stitch. So go ahead and cinch that closed. You're going to go under two loops of one stitch and then grab two loops of the stitch across from it. So you have four loops total. You're going to pull your needle through and then you're going to move over to your next two stitches. You're going to lay that piece of yarn on top and you're going to go through your next two stitches. The yarn is going to lay on top of your piece just like this. Pull tight and then move on to your next two stitches. Lay the yarn on top, move over and continue this down the row. Okay, we're reaching the end here. We're going to go through these two stitches and then I'm going to go through these last two stitches. There's this little bar left, like a side stitch, and that's totally fine. Now that you're done, we're going to just weave in this yarn. So I'm just going to go behind it, pull my yarn needle through, and then you want to weave in the end really well. Once you get your yarn weaved in, you can just cut off that extra piece and then I like to do some smushing at this point. <laughs> so just smush your owl until you're happy with the look. She's looking good. We are going to work on the wings next and then we are done. Okay, we're going to get started with our wing. You can go ahead and grab the color you used for the body. We are going to make six single crochet into a magic circle. Do that however you'd like, or you can do my slip knot chain two. Here I'm going to chain one and then chain two. I'm going to place six single crochet in that second chain from the hook. I'm going to tighten up my magic circle here. We're going to do something different. We're not going to go into our next stitch. We're not going to join. We are just going to stop and we're going to make a chain one. Yarn over and pull through. Now we're going to turn our work so that magic circle piece is going to be facing you. We are going to make a slip stitch in this first stitch right here. Here I'll show you. This is our first stitch. So we're going to go here and we're going to make a slip stitch. We're going to pull through and then we're going to pull through again. We're going to make three single crochet into this next stitch. Here's one. Back through the same stitch. Our second single crochet and back through the same stitch. Three. Now we're going to repeat that sequence of a slip stitch and a, the three single crochet. So we're going to move over a stitch, make another slip stitch. Yarn over pull through and then pull through our stitch. Move over to make your three single crochet into that stitch. And then we're going to move over and make a slip stitch. And then we're going to end in that last stitch with three single crochet. So this is a little bit of a weird way of doing it, but we are done with the wing after this stitch. From here, I'm going to tighten up my magic circle because it's going to open up a little bit more. And then we'll leave a piece of yarn to fasten off. If you're going to attach the wings, I'd leave a little bit of a longer piece, but if you're going to glue them on, don't worry about leaving that long. So fasten off by yarning over, and pulling that yarn all the way through. Depending on how you made your magic circle, your magic circle, circle bit might be in the front, so you might need to move that to the back. 
from here, I'm just going to show you, I'm going to weave in my piece to the back because you want to, if you're going to attach with yarn for assembly, go ahead and weave in all those pieces to the back of your piece. Weave in your fastened off bit and then also weave in your magic circle piece. You can use those two pieces of yarn to attach your wing to your body. If you are going to glue it, then just weave in all those pieces really well and then just cut off the excess piece. When you're done with this one wing, go ahead, pause the video, rewind, and make a second wing. The one on the left is how you would keep it if you wanted to attach, and then if you wanted to glue on your wing, you would just weave in all the ends. Okay, we'll meet back for assembly, and then we'll be done. Okay, we're almost done. Now, the owl actually looks cute without her, owl, her, without her wings, too, so if you didn't want to add wings, you didn't have to. But here, I'm going to grab some pins and just place my wings to see where I would like them. I usually do the corner of the wing to the corner of the eye. That's just kind of how I like to place it. If you wanted to use yarn to attach your wing, you could just grab your yarn needle. I have two pieces of yarn here, so I'm just gonna go underneath two stitches, kind of grab two different rows. I'm gonna pull that through, and then I'm simply gonna make a knot with my other piece of yarn. If you want the wing to not be able to move, you might wanna put a few more stitches in there. This will keep the wing on, but it'll just have a little bit of movement. Make sure to just weave in those ends really well and then cut off the extra piece. If you wanted to glue your wing on, I love this Aileen's Tacky Glue. It works really well. You could just take your pin out, add a bit of glue, and then I like to place my pin back in and keep it overnight just to keep that wing in place and make sure that it stays on with the glue. Thank you guys so much for joining me on this crochet along. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, subscribe. I'll have more videos coming up this summer and I have a whole slew of them that you can check out as well. Head over to yarnsociety.com for free patterns.